Jerome Powell is successfully crashing the markets. Every financial market out there is staring at the Fed, and they yet again raise interest rates by 75 basis points. So obviously, this is being done to combat the inflation that's been going on. But right now, it is not only doing that, but also destroying demand in everything from real estate markets to the stock market. I mean, we can see this is the stock market just when they had made this announcement earlier in the day. And you can see lots of red, already pretty bad, but it actually only got worse for the bigger companies. It got all right for kind of energy and stuff over here. But uh, these big companies, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, for these guys to be moving 4%, 3% in one day, that's a lot of money being lost in value. And something really affecting that is the two-year treasury note. Basically, these bonds trading at four over 4%, 4 which is the highest since June 2007, which is an interesting date, you know, 2007, 2008. Basically, the last financial crisis is when everything was trading at these levels. So is the same thing going to happen again? I mean, you can see the 10-year is over 4%, which is insane. When you think about returns you can get from the S&P 500 is around 7 to 9% a year. If you can get a basically risk-free 4%, that has a lot of people putting their money in these instead of in the S&P or in the stock market. And this latest move from the Fed, increasing interest rates at historical rates. This is the fastest rates have been increasing basically ever. See them saying, well, raising interest rates can slow inflation by making borrowing more expensive and therefore less appealing. The move further increases debt costs for Americans already struggling with rising prices on pretty much everything, including necessities like food, and rent, which you have a pretty interesting chart on this that shows what's breaking and shows just how big of a problem we might be in. And that is right here where you can see the personal savings rate near historic lows at the beginning in 2020 here. We see 33% of savings. You got 33% savings during the 2020 pandemic. That has to do with stimulus stuff like this peak up here is stimulus this peak stimulus and then this one also stimulus so when it spiked it's stimulus but you see it very drastically draw down over these last couple years and what is absolutely skyrocketing is credit card loans so the way americans are dealing with the increased cost of living is simply putting it on a credit card and that obviously is not a long-term viable solution especially when you combine it with this right here with uh, how big of this gap is Personal savings at 3%, credit card loans at $926 billion. So obviously the uh, logical thing that's going to happen at some point if we continue on these trends is eventually we get to no savings or low enough savings that can't pay these insanely high credit card bills. And once you get to that point, something breaks pretty bad. And that might be the big financial crisis that ends up making the Fed have to pivot or do something because it seems right now they are not stopping raising interest rates until something bad happens and a trillion dollars almost in debt that gets defaulted on would be something pretty bad. Like we can see even last week, Goldman Sachs economists that they expected the Fed to lift its benchmark rate even higher to a range of 4.75 to 5% by March of 2023. That is massive interest rates. These are interest rates that haven't been seen since, can you guess when? 2007, the last financial crisis. So a lot of things stacking up comparing to the last really bad times. We're about at that right now. And the problem is the Fed seems no way in uh, that it's actually going to start slowing down and it's not going to do anything until something breaks. I mean, we can see the federal funds rate. We can see right now it's at 3.08%, which is higher than what it got to in 2019, which is breaking this trend of these kind of plateaus being lower than the one previous. And now we've broken that and we've gotten to 308 which hasn't been seen since this time in 2008, which uh, was obviously a great financial crisis, or even during 2001, which was the dot-com bubble. So another financial crisis. So we are in times where it looks like there's no way to avoid some sort of financial crisis coming, and it does look like the one we're going to get is a credit card loan one or a debt one where people cannot pay their debts. And we have almost a trillion dollars in these debts. It's crazy amounts of money 
that will get defaulted on if things keep getting worse. And this part I find super hilarious because for some reason, everyone continues to say, we're not in a recession. See that rate hike increases the chance of a recession. Newsflash, we're already in a recession. You know, whether you want to change the definition and throw all these things around, we're in a recession. Technical recession, if you want to even call it just that. Everyone living day to day knows that they're in a recession. Things are getting more expensive. They're making less money. Not a good combination. But even here, you can see there's a two in three chance that the economy will contract in the next 12 to 18 months, according to 14 economists surveyed by financial services, sites, bank rate. That's up from a one in three chance, according to a survey conducted at the beginning of the year. So we're moving pretty parabolically to the economist agreeing that there's problems coming, although they didn't think there would be problems coming printing $12 trillion during 2020 when all the people on Twitter said there were. They said they didn't, and here we are with a bunch of problems. So economists, you know, are they really good? Who really knows? But right now, it seems like we are in a spot where even the economists are looking at this saying, there's no way around it. You can't change definitions enough to print more food. You know, you can't do that. So the recession is coming, and it's probably going to be a really, really bad one. And just to look at the credit card problem, because you see what gets more expensive with these rate hikes, credit cards, auto loans, mortgages, other variable rate loans, uh, the borrowing money. It's basically borrowing money. And anytime you do that, it gets more expensive what the Fed's doing. See with credit cards, it's the APR is likely to climb an average of 19% from 18.16 as of late September, according to Greg McBride. He's a chief financial analyst for a credit card balance of $5,000 with 19% APR. You would pay an additional $1,200. So you can see it's not only mortgages that are getting more expensive, even credit card debt is getting more expensive for five grand. You're paying an extra $1,200 in interest if you're not paying that off every month. So if you're carrying a balance, you're getting screwed. So obviously the best thing to do right now is to not get in debt. Try your best to stay out of debt because it is one, super expensive. And then two, is a large chance of problems coming up with if you lose income or income goes down and you have a bunch of debt. It's just not a good combination and you don't wanna be stuck in that bad situation. No slowdown of the Fed coming, no pivot looking likely for anytime soon at least. It looks like for the stock market, for crypto, for real estate, there's a lot of problems going on and there might not be any solutions coming anytime soon. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens, what breaks, and once something breaks, the Fed will be forced to pivot and we'll see how it all plays out then. I don't think anybody knows what could happen, what could break. Everyone's just kind of staring at this event, knowing that something bad is about to happen. But that's gonna do it for this video. As always, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Run the road to 1,000 subscribers. I'll see you guys in my next video.